What's up everybody? Today I'm going to take a story and I'm going to break it down into three parts because it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of stuff I'm going to throw in it. One is basic retouching, then two is advanced retouching, and then the third and final part is creative retouching. But let's jump into it. Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. This is a number of photos I have taken during the photo shoot. And I've gone ahead and I pre-selected a couple of pictures. Number one is the photo that's been selected as cover of the fashion magazine, this one. And number two, this one, it's a, it's a passport checker color. I'll need this for white balance reason, and I'll show you in a second. So, as I was explaining before, this tutorial is gonna be broken down into three parts basic retouching, advanced retouching, and uh, uh, let's call it creative retouching. So the basic retouching is when I go through the photo and I make sure that the white balance is correct, the exposure is correct, there is no chromatic aberration, and you know, all the basics are uh, taken care of. Then there is the second part, advanced uh, retouching. Advanced retouching is when I take the photograph, I jump into Photoshop, and I do some more detailed retouching. I take care of the finer details. Um, I do dodge and burning, I do um, frequency separation to remove blemishes and uh, any other distraction from the photos. And then there is the creative part. The creative part usually happens in Photoshop and it's really me experimenting with a bunch of filters. So for uh, casting some color or adding some specific effect. And this is giving a different twist to the picture, a unique character to the picture. So let's start with the first part of the video. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select uh, uh, Passport Checker. Now I can make a detailed episode about the Passport Checker. Let me know in the comment down below if you wanna know more about it. But for now, what I can tell you is there is this row of whites. This is for portrait, this is for landscape. If you can see in here, there is a dent for the landscape and there is a dent here. Now, this is for identifying the neutral white balance for a given scene. For instance, for a portrait, the first, the first checker is uh, the neutral one. And then for the landscape is the middle one. So I'm going to pick the white balance and click on the first one. So I'm going to have a neutral white balance. Now, with this in mind, I'm going to right click, develop setting, copy setting, and I'm going to check none, select process version, and then white balance. So basically, I'm going to copy the white balance from one photo to another. There are 3000 ways to do this in Lightroom. This is one of the way. So I'm going to copy this for now. I'm going to jump over to the next. Now, you won't be able to see much difference between before and after setting the white balance. And that's because I've done this in camera when I was in the studio. So it's just a minimum change, if there is any change. Paste settings, and it's slightly uh, cooler, but that's all about it. Now, as Lightroom workflow goes, I just usually tend to follow the order of these panels. So let's start with it. And the first thing I do is I notice that, I wanna zoom in just that, Touch. and I can see that there are highlights but they are not really blown out so I don't really back off a lot on highlights I will just back off a little bit let me fit the picture to the frame then for sure you can see here I it's very very dark this part of the picture so I want to open up the shadows a little bit and this is for sure introducing some noise but I'll take care of it in a second the whites I just eyeball it to what I think is correct or more so looking at the histogram here and for the black I just darken them up touch there you go I might bump the whites a little bit more and now I'm playing with the exposure just brighten the picture up over I think like this I like it now, usually bump up the vibrance, and that is to make sure that across the board, all the colors are a good level of saturation. 
and then because usually bumping up the vibrance it makes the picture too much saturated then I bake off on saturation just a touch so I'm happy with this part tone curve I don't really mess around with it here because this is more creative as well as HSL it's creative stuff and I'm not doing any creative stuff now same goes with the split toning details is something I want to take care of so details I'm probably going to all the alt moving the masking all the way until I see only the edges of the model and it's happening around 95 90 ish something so that will make sure that only the edges of the model are sharpened uh, noise reduction well, let me see here because we opened up the shadows and there is for sure some noise it's not massive so i'm not really bothered by it i'm just gonna add a touch like 10 points of noise reduction and that that should be it um, then the color noise i leave it to the default it works fine with me lens correction now uh, usually when i pick a lens is because i like the focal length of the lens but also i like that specific flaws they are coming with the lens every lens has optical flaws and because of that i don't want to correct uh, those flaws i want to keep them what I want to do instead is I want to remove chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is nasty, is ugly, so I'm just clicking there. And sure, you can go in the manual and, you know, the fringing and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, the default settings for me work well. Also, this image, it's not very challenging as far as chromatic aberration goes. Uh, I'm not shooting a dark object against a, a bright um, sky for instance where you would see much more chromatic aberration so that's fine this is a studio it's you know a controlled environment i'm not doing any architectural photo here so i don't really need to fix any vertical level upright uh, transformation uh, effects again this is the creative part so you're gonna see this in the third step and usually it's applying some vignetting and then applying some grain oh one thing i forgot to do and i want to do it right away is uh, to go back to the basic panel and uh, browse the profiles and apply the portrait profile from my camera and that's basically it this is the picture before and after so now with the basics done let's move into the photoshop for a more advanced retouching or oh, if you have some questions on anything you've seen so far, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because that allows me uh, to create more content like this. Uh, that's it for today. So see you in the next part.